हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लेट इस कंटिन्यू चैप्टर नाइन फोर्स एंड लॉज ऑफ मोशन इन लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन एंड इनर्शा नाउ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सेकंड लॉ ऑफ मोशन द फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन इंडिकेट्स दैट व्हेन एन अनबैलेंस्ड एक्सटर्नल फोर्स एक्ट्स ऑन एन ऑब्जेक्ट इट्स वेलोसिटी चेंजेस दैट इज द ऑब्जेक्ट गेट्स एन एक्सलेशन we would now like to study how the acceleration of an object depends on the force applied to it and how we measure a force let us recount some observations from our everyday life during the game of table tennis if the ball hits a player it does not hurt him on the other hand when a fast moving cricket ball hits a spectator it may hurt him a truck at race does not require any attention when parked along a road side but a moving truck even at speeds as low as 5 meter per second may kill a person standing in its path a small mass such as bullet may kill a person when fired from a gun these observations suggest that the impact of uh, produced by object depends on their mass and velocity similarly if an object is to be accelerated we know that a greater force is required to give a greater velocity in other words there appears to exist some quantity of importance that combines the object's mass and its velocity one such property known as momentum was introduced by newton the momentum p of an object is defined as the product of its mass that is m and velocity v so we can write p is equal to m into v this is the momentum momentum has both direction and magnitude as it is vector quantity its direction is the same as that of velocity v the si unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second since the application of an unbalanced force brings a change in the velocity of the object it is therefore clear that a force also produces a change of momentum now let us consider a situation in which a car with a dead battery is to be pushed along a straight road to give it a speed of 1 meter per second which is sufficient to start its engine if one or two persons give a sudden push to it it means unbalanced force to it it hardly starts but a continuous push over some time results in a gradual acceleration of the car to the speed it means that the change of momentum of the car is not only determined by the magnitude of the force but also by the time during which the force is exerted in this example we have seen now it may then uh, also be concluded that the force necessary to change the momentum of an object depends on the time rate at which the momentum is changed the second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of force so this is the second law of motion and uh, let us uh, discuss the mathematical formulation for this second law of motion so let us discuss mathematical formulation of second law of motion suppose an object of mass m is moving along a straight line with an initial velocity u we know that what is initial velocity we have discussed this in chapter number 8 it is uniformly accelerated to velocity v in time small t by the application of a constant force that is capital f throughout the time t the initial and final momentum of the object then will be p1 is equal to mu and p2 is equal to mv respectively then let us discuss 
the change in momentum it will be directly proportional to p2 minus p1 we know that p2 is mv final momentum and p1 is initial momentum so p2 minus p1 that is mv minus mu and on taking m constant common will have m into v minus u and the rate of change of momentum which is the second law of motion rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to m v minus u divided by t and on applied force f is directly proportional to m into v minus u upon t or we can say f is equal to k into m v minus u upon t where k is the constant of proportionality and we know that v minus u upon t that is change in velocity per unit time is equal to acceleration so a is equal to v minus u upon t that is acceleration which is the rate of change of velocity we have discussed in chapter number 8 the quantity k is the constant of proportionality and the si unit of mass and acceleration we know that it is the common unit kg and meter per second square respectively the unit of force is so chosen that the value of constant k becomes 1 for unit value for this one unit of force is defined as the amount that produces an acceleration of 1 meter per second square in an object of 1 kg mass that is one unit of force is equal to k into 1 kg into 1 meter per second square thus the value of k becomes 1 and f is equal to ma the unit of force is kg meter per second square or newton which has the symbol n the second law of motion gives us a method to measure the force acting on an object as a product of its mass and acceleration that is f is equal to m into a just we have discussed the second law of motion is often seen in the action in our everyday life so have you not noticed that while catching a fast moving cricket ball a fielder in the ground gradually pulls his hands backward with the moving ball in doing so the fielder increases the time during which the high velocity of the moving ball decreases to zero and the ball can be easily catch thus the acceleration of the ball is decreased and therefore the impact of catching the fast moving ball also reduced if the ball is stopped suddenly then its high velocity decreases to zero in very short interval of time thus the rate of change of momentum of the ball will be large therefore a large force would have to be applied for holding the catch that may hurt the palm of the fielder in a high jump athletic event the athletes are made to fall either on the cushion bed or on a sand bed this is to increase the time of the athletes fall to stop after making the jump this decreases the rate of change of momentum and hence the force so try uh, again try to ponder how a carrot karate player breaks a slab of ice with a single blow now with the help of second law of motion the derivation of second law of motion we can state the first law of motion in mathematical form that is force is equal to ma we have just discussed this in last video so let us start in equation 9.4 f is equal to ma we have proved or we can write f is equal to m into a that is a is v minus u upon t and on multiplying f into t we'll have ft is equal to mv minus mv that is when f is equal to 0 force is 0 v will be equal to u hence initial velocity is equal to final velocity for time t this means that the object will continue moving with uniform velocity u throughout the time t if u is zero then v will also be zero that is the object will remain at rest the same concept inertia so students i hope you understood 
the second law of motion and f is equal to ma concept thank you for listening